Hi Dragons and welcome back to another day of dropping everything and reading in your advisory classes. I am Miss Fisher and I'm here with recommendations for books I think you'll enjoy reading during this time and any other time you make the rad decision to drop everything and read on your own. This week here in Austin ISD, as well as in school districts across Texas, teachers and students will be commemorating something that is known as Freedom Week. You'll hear more about Freedom Week uh, in advisory and I think in your social studies classes as well. Um, but to put it simply, this is a time to reflect on and celebrate uh, the freedoms guaranteed to all of us by our Constitution. And you might be wondering why we're talking about Freedom Week and the Constitution during drop everything and read time. What could those things possibly have uh, in common with one another? Um, and you might be surprised to know that there's actually a lot. Uh, a part of the Constitution that you may or may not be aware of uh, is the amendments, and specifically the First Amendment, uh, which covers a lot of things, and I highly recommend that you talk to your social studies teacher about what rights the First Amendment guarantees to you. But for the purposes of our conversation today, um, the First Amendment protects your right to freedom of speech, and that means, among many other things, that you should have access to read any book that you want to read. Because you are in middle school, really the only people who should be making decisions about what you read are you and the grown-ups who take care of you, right? Um, it's not the government's job or some someone else's job to decide what is right for you, right? That's, that's a real local decision with you and the people who take care of you. Um, and that might seem really obvious, right? Like who on earth would be trying to limit what you can read? It seems like people are always trying to make you read, right? Um, but literally since the beginning of reading, there have been people who have wanted to decide what you and everyone else was allowed to read. This has become such a thing in the United States that in the 1980s, when I was a kid, the American Library Association decided that they needed to call attention to the fact that there were these groups of people across the country who would challenge a book based on something in it that they didn't like and then have it removed. They would ban it from classrooms and from libraries um, simply because there was something in it that they didn't want their children to read about. Um, and so there's a week in September, and actually now the whole month of September uh, is, is celebrated for ba banned books awareness. Uh, so that makes it kind of a cool, um, like, partner with Freedom Week, right? Because your freedom to read a banned book is a pretty awesome freedom to have. Um, so I thought today uh, I would encourage all of you to take advantage of some banned books that we have available for you to he read here on campus, uh, both physical books and digital books that we have in Mac and Bio. And I have several to share with you, but honestly, and this will surprise you, um, but pretty much every book has been challenged or banned for some kind of reason. So uh, some of the more popular reasons are if there is like profanity or bad words in a book, it will be banned. If there's discussion of drugs or sexual activity of any kind, this book could be challenged or banned. If students, are, like if kids are depicted in a book doing things that are um, seen as too adult or also seen as being like impossible or magical or breaking the rules of reality, this book could be challenged or banned. Um, and if a book uh, has like a political viewpoint, so if a book could be seen as advocating for a group or uh, advocating against something, um, then it could be challenged or banned. So literally every book could go through this process and many books have, many books that are really beloved have. Um, some of them are really old books like the Adventures of Tom Sawyer, which is so old that you can read this book for free on the internet now because it's no longer under copyright. This book has been challenged and banned um, forever um, because of the way in which it depicts uh, race and in particular black people. Um, a lot of the language that is used in the book is definitely not politically correct language um, and because of that it gets banned frequently. Uh, another book that gets banned for the same reason, a really beloved book, is To Kill a Mockingbird. 
Um, this book is often read by students about your age. Uh, seventh, eighth, ninth graders often read this book. It's one of the most beloved books ever written. Um, but it does use a lot of powerful racial, racial language um, that is hard to read at times. Um, and it also depicts uh, a crime and a trial and a lot of really unfair behavior. And because of that, it is often challenged and banned as well. So it could be a, a classic book like that that gets challenged. It could also be R.L. Stein's Goosebumps series, which I know we talked about last week when I brought up Fear Street. Um, but these books are frequently banned because people think they're too scary for kids. It could be a Harry Potter book. Uh, literally, since this first Harry Potter book came out, Harry Potter has appeared on the top 10 most challenged and banned book list for that year. Um, because there are groups of people who really object to kids performing magic. They feel that that is anti-religious. Um, they don't like s children depicted as wizards. Um, and so it is frequently challenged and banned. There are a lot of libraries you could walk into in this country and you would not find this book on the shelf. Thankfully, that's not true here. We have this book, um, and it's actually here right now. It's been checked out a lot, but it is available. So this is a book that you could request if you have not yet read Harry Potter and you would like to. A book that I can barely keep on the shelves here is Drama by Raina Telgemeier. Um, in fact, everything by Raina Telgemeier is really popular with y'all. Um, all of her graphic novels like Guts and Sisters and Ghosts, this one you all really love. This one is the one that's most challenged and banned because it does, um, because of its depictions of relationships and in particular LGBTQ plus relationships. Uh, there are people who feel that that is not appropriate for middle school aged readers. Um, coincidentally, this author is also the one who writes all of the um, Babysitter's Club graphic novels. So she is someone that you all are really familiar with, um, but this book, again, is one that you wouldn't find in every library. So it's a crazy thing to think about. It It's rare that it's here. So if this is a book that you have been wanting to check out, please request it because it is here right now. Um, we also have uh, some physical copies and an audiobook copy of the book Speak. Um, this is a novel in verse, so it's written as like a long poem, um, and it depicts, it's a tough book, it depicts um, sexual assault, uh, and it is very honest about the impact of that on a young girl, uh, and that is honestly the reason it has been banned, because there are people who feel like that is not uh, an appropriate topic for a young adult book. Um, but if it is a topic that you are interested in and you feel ready for, we do have physical copies of it. We also have this audiobook version. You can request both of those using the book request form. Um, a book that's been really popular, we have physical copies here in the library and in some of the ELA teacher classroom libraries for sure, is The Hate You Give. Um, and it's a fantastic book. It was also made into a movie not long ago. Um, but it is about a police shooting um, in which a young unarmed black man is killed um, and the impact that that has on the community around him. Um, and because of that, there are people who feel like it is too political um, and uh, you know maybe is too connected to the Black Lives Matter movement. And so it has been challenged and banned. Uh, the Hate You Give is one of the top 10 most challenged and banned books of 2020. Um, and it and another book from that list, um, which is this one, Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism in You. Um, and this is a, a really incredible book about the history of race in our country. Um, and it can't cover everything, but it really tries to give you an idea of how, um, how racism has shifted the way we talk about history in our country. Um, and this is actually, it's cool because the original version of this book was written for adults um, by this man, Ibram X. Kendi. Um, and 
people felt like it was such an important book. It was such an important thing for us to, to realize that our history does not always show us the full spectrum of how race um, has has impacted the way that we've done things. We've left race out of our history books in a lot of ways. Um, that he teamed up with uh, probably my favorite young adult writer, Jason Reynolds, to create this version, which is specifically designed for middle and high school students to read. Um, and this book, we have a physical copy available. We also have, there are 10 copies of this available on Mac and Via. Um, so you could read it online or you could check out the physical copy. Both of these books not only were uh, top 10 banned books in the year 2020, but they also were banned from a school district right next to us last year. Um, so I feel incredibly lucky and proud that these books are in our library and available for you should you choose to read them. Um, because reading should always be something that you can choose, right? No one should choose that for you. So those are just... A handful of books that we have um, that are like frequent flyers on the challenged and banned books list. Uh, if you'd like to know more about this, I'm going to provide some links for you this morning so you can explore a little bit more about what this means. Um, you can also see some titles. I'm going to link you to the 100 most banned books of all time because um, who knows, you might look through there and find a book that you've read. Um, if you've ever read Captain Underpants, one of the most challenged and banned books ever. Um, so you'll you'll probably see some things that surprise you and you can read the reasons why they're challenged and banned. And then also maybe you'll pick a book, maybe one of these, maybe one of those, um, that you would like to read. Uh, this would be a great time to do that. It's an incredible way to celebrate your freedom. Um, and it's also just a cool thing to think about um, and something that I personally feel deeply grateful for. Um, Every single time you are given the opportunity to choose what you are going to read. Um, you know, a teacher doesn't say, hey, everyone's reading this. They say, hey, what book do you want to read? And here's time for that. You are being given the right to exercise your freedom to read whatever you want. And that is um, a freedom that is meaningful and important and shouldn't be taken for granted um, because it's not a freedom that everyone has and it's a freedom that is very frequently under attack. So celebrate your freedom to read this week and every week. Um, and I think maybe you'll discover some books that you'll really love. All right. That's it for me this week, Dragons. I'll be back next week with more recommendations. Please keep your book requests coming. Please keep returning books to the book drop. You're doing a great job with that. Um, I'm super proud of all of the reading that you're doing already this year. Can't wait to see what choices you make next. Until I see you again, I hope you're safe and healthy, and I hope you have lots of fantastic things to read.